Yeah, Richard Saperstein actually joining us right now. He is, of course, the chief investment officer over at Treasury Partners, joining us today from Crested Butte, Colorado. Hey, Richard, thanks for being here today. The reflation trade, are you buying into it? Well, uh, look, there are very significant pre- and post-COVID tech trends that are and themes that are in place. And those are going to only accelerate in a post-COVID world, and we're focused on that. With regard to inflation, there will be transitory inflation because you know the year-over-year changes take oil or copper. Uh, so we are going to see higher inflation in the short run. But how it affects what we do for a living, meaning interest rates and stock prices, we're not concerned about inflation derailing the stock market recovery as well as uh, you know, driving rates higher in any meaningful way. Will anything derail the stock market ramping up higher, Richard? Are we ever going to get worried about valuations? We're concerned about valuations, but right now the market's being fueled by uh, vaccine optimism, low interest rates, strong EPS from Q4, as well as this massive fiscal and monetary policy that really totaled 50 per- going to wind up totaling 50 percent of GDP. As long as we have that stimulus in place, markets are going to continue to move higher counterintuitively, after the economy recovers and the Fed's got to pull back the punch bowl, that would be one of the major risks that I would see. But we're not at that point yet. What is, though, the level of rates or the level of inflation to where it really does start to make stock markets nervous? Well, there's been so much economic scarring, as well as there's 10 million unemployed workers that we don't see inflation returning in any meaningful and sustainable way, uh, at least until 2022. Obviously, there'll be transitory inflation in 21. So if you look at the unemployment level, we'll need uh, a gain of 250,000 jobs per month for 24 months to get everybody back, back at work. So the economic scarring, the unemployment, the surplus capacity in our manufacturing will keep a lid on actual true inflation. There seems to be general consensus out there, Richard, in the recovery uh, and particularly in sort of this rebound we're seeing in risk assets. There's not necessarily consensus on which risk assets people should embrace here. Some people say uh, go back to some of those old growth momentum names or Apples or Amazons, if you will. Some say go for some of those small cap cyclicals. Uh, What do you say? So we look at free cash flow. And if you look at the free cash flow of Apple, it's grown by 50, by 100 percent in the last five years. Microsoft, 120 percent in five years. The S&P, just 50 percent. So the large cap tech is generating exceptionally strong free cash flow. Now, when you look at what they're doing with it, uh, if you take the four large companies, exclude Apple, they last year they invested 100 billion dollars in CapEx. That's a 25% year-over-year increase. So basically, what are we doing? We're overweight growth, we're overweight technology because these companies keep plowing money back into their businesses and really creating more of a moat and recurring revenues against invaders. So we, we like the growth story. We're not buying the value. Sure, we have value exposure, but I ask everyone this simple question. In five years from now, would you rather own you know, Coca-Cola and uh, Chevron, or would you rather own Amazon and Apple? Mm. And for now, you're sticking with the Amazons, the Apples, the Microsofts, it would seem. At what point do you think, though, will we ever see an opportunity cost from your perspective of maybe sticking with U.S. big tech? Are you ever looking at where people want to put their money abroad, particularly with the dollar weakening story for 2021? We have zero exposure to emerging markets. And we have a dramatic underweight to non-U.S. developed market stocks. We're Mm. extremely overweight in the U.S. as a result of the U.S. having the most number of technology and growth stocks in the world. Now, when we talk about growth, there's a scarcity. In the last five years, only 66 companies in the S&P 500 have grown their top line by 15 percent or more. And in that number was 155 companies 11 years ago. So there's a scarcity of growth. The U.S. has the most growth, most growth companies. Plus, we have one fiscal and monetary policy. Uh, so we're going to stick with our overweight of uh, U.S. versus non-U.S. stocks. 
Doubling down on the dollar and indeed dollar-related assets, it would seem. Richard Saperstein, it's great to have you being so specific today. We thank you, Treasury Partners Chief Investment Officer, all about growth.